Okay, we're going to take a look at section 3.3. We're looking at linear transformations. We're going to extend and generalize the idea of matrix multiplication. So uh, first I'll look at some of our goals, our expectations. Uh, go back and look at matrix transformation again, look at some examples, and then we're going to generalize this into something we're going to call a linear transformation. Uh, in terms of some of the main result, we're going to need something called a standard coordinate vector, which we'll define, and then we'll draw the connection between linear and matrix transformations, and finally do a couple examples. So by the end of this, you should be able to take a linear transformation, sorry, I should say just take a transformation, and show whether or not it is a linear transformation. You should be given be able to take a linear transformation and then show how to find the matrix representing that transformation. And finally, you should be able to do so using correct notation and using notation consistent with this uh, new idea called the standard coordinate vector. Okay, so we've defined this idea of matrix transformation. We've uh, taken a matrix times a vector. So the idea here is that if we have a vector x with n rows, if we take a times x, the codomain is the set of vectors with m rows. And we've defined matrix multiplication so that if you take this matrix A, you can think about this in terms of the columns of A, and you end up, after the multiplication, getting a linear combination of the columns of A. One of the properties of matrix multiplication, which we haven't done yet, but we will do uh, soon and, and go through the details of this, is that if you take a times a quantity u plus v, it's the same thing as taking a times u and a times v and then adding those things. And if you have a constant or scalar number c, if you take a times the quantity c times u, you can pull that c out and do that operation last. So we're going to take that idea and generalize it. And the idea here is we're going to uh, define something called a linear transformation. Linear transformation is going to take a vector in Rn, and it's going to return a vector in Rm. And it's going to satisfy two things. T acting on u plus v is the same thing as taking T acting on u, T acting on v, and adding those things. Also, if C is a scalar number, you can pull that out and do that multiplication afterwards. Okay, so now if I give you some operation or some function, if I, you, if I ask you to show that it's a linear transformation, you have to go through the steps and show that both of those two things are true. If any one of those is not true, it is not a linear transformation. So for example, uh, I'm going to define this linear transformation. So this is going to take a vector in R3, so that's our domain. And it's going to return a vector in R2, so that's our codomain. And Suppose you're asked to show that this is a linear transformation. So we need to, if it is, we need to show that both properties are true. So suppose I've got a vector x. Suppose x has three components, x, y, z. And we have a vector u, which has three components, u, v, and w. I'm going to first look at t of x plus u. And then separately, I'm going to look at tx and then look at tu, and then add those and see if I get the same thing as this. But first, so what is this? So x, I said, was x, y, z. u is u, v, w. So now I'm going to do this sum first, and then I'm going to see what happens with t acting on that. So, that, so I'm going to have the first component, I'm going to have x plus u. Second component is going to be y plus v, and the third component is going to be z plus w. Now, what does t do? t says take the second plus the third, and that's going to be in the first entry. So the second is, oops, right, is y plus v, and the third is z plus w. And the second component is, says take that first entry and take the negative of that. So it's going to be minus x plus u. All right. Let me rewrite this as, 
I'm just going to combine the, these two because these are associated with the first vector. So that's y plus z plus v plus w. And now I'm going to distribute the minus sign. So I get minus x minus u. All right. So now the question is, is this equal to t of x plus t of u? What's t of x? So x is x, y, z. And the definition here is I take the second plus the third, y plus z, and then take minus the first. So I get that. And let's see, t of u, so u is u, w, v. Again, the definition says take the second plus the third. Oops, and I messed that up. That should be u, v, w. Sorry. u, v, w. So second plus the third is v plus w. And then the minus the first. So if I take t of x plus t of u, I'm going to take y plus z e minus x, that's t of x, and t of u is v plus w minus u, and I'm going to combine these into one. So this is going to be y plus z plus v plus w, and then the second entry is going to be minus x minus u, and if you notice, those two things are exactly the same. So this says that t of x plus u is t of x plus t of u. So the first property is satisfied. Now we need to go through and show, see whether or not the second second property is satisfied. So what do we have? I'm going to look at t of c of x. So that's going to be t times some constant times x, y, z. And let's see, that's going to be t of, and if I multiply that through, I'm going to have cx, cy, cz. And by definition, I take the second plus the third, cy plus cz, minus the first, so I get minus cx. All right, so now the question is, is, what is t times t of x? So this is going to be c times t of x, y, z. So this is going to be y plus z, so the second plus the third then minus the first. So if I multiply that c through, I'm going to have c times y plus z, then c times minus x. And if I distribute the c, I'm going to have cy plus cz. This is going to be minus cx. And the thing to notice is my t of cx is equal to this thing, which is c times t of x. So both properties are satisfied, and it is indeed a linear transformation. So if you were asked to show this, you would be expected to go through and do all these operations and show that this, the way this is defined, it will give you a uh, linear transformation. <coughs> All right, let's look at an example that's not a linear transformation. Um, so let's see. If I have x is x, y, z, and u is u, oops, v, w, then t of x, y, x plus y, sorry, x plus u, that. So that's going to be t of x plus u, y plus v, z plus w. Now what does my rule say? My rule says 
take the first entry and add 1 to it. So it's x plus u plus 1. The second entry is basically just the second entry left alone. And the third entry is the third entry left alone. By the way, this operation is referred to as a shift. All it does is take all the x values and adds 1 to them, or shifts it by 1. All right, so now let's look at t of x. So this is the first one plus one, and then I leave the second and third entries alone. t of u, take the first entry plus one, leave the second and third alone. Now if I take t of x plus t of u, it's gonna be x plus one, yz from this entry plus u plus 1 vw from here. So first entry is going to be x plus 1 plus u plus 1. Second entry is going to be y plus v and the third entry is z plus w. Thing to note is this is not the same as that because this is x plus u plus 2. Those things are not equal, and this is not a linear transformation. Okay? Now, at this point, I would normally be done. I could just say it's not a linear transformation because it does not satisfy the first property, and that's it. I want to show that it also does not satisfy the second property, just to show how to go through and do that. So for the second property, what do we have? We have t of x plus u. And again, oops, sorry. Went backwards there. So this is the second property. I should be taking c times x. So that's going to be I'm going to multiply every entry by c. And the rule says take the first entry, which is cx, and add 1. Take the second entry, and leave it alone, and just leave the third entry alone. So let's see. Now, what is t, c times t of x? What is this? This is going to be x plus 1, yz. When I multiply by c, I get cx plus c, so I'm going to multiply everything by c, cy and cz. Now here's the thing, these two are equal and they match. This will match if c equals 1, but only if c equals 1. This is not true. For all values of c, so therefore it does not satisfy this property and it fails to uh, match that and is not a linear transformation.